Hey guys, here's a new toy I just picked up. It's a Superior Instruments Co. Television Crossbar Generator. Never used one before. Uh, I think I have some idea what it does. I think it makes some vertical bars and some horizontal bars, depending on which mode you pick on channels 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I'm not quite sure what the sleep frequency is all about. It might be the number of bars it generates. Uh, it also has linearity and sweep. I'm not quite sure what that's all about. Uh, no idea if it works. I just got it. It was a whopping five bucks. So I figured what the heck. Might be interesting. Uh, looks like I just got to pop one screw off and uh, let's see what's inside this guy. Well, it turns out I was wrong. It wasn't just the one screw on the back. I had to take all the screws off around the front. At any rate, now it's open. Right off the bat, I can see one wild looking tube that has two caps coming out of the top of it. And they're connected together, which is also odd. The base is a bit cracked. If that tube isn't bad, it might be hard to, uh, hard to replace them. It's a 7193. Not really familiar with that. Oh, there's an acorn tube, which I am somewhat familiar with. Not two acorn tubes. <laughs> Those are uh, really high frequency um, oscillator tubes. Quite often in um, vintage RF generators, like uh, I know there's an old Heath kit I got one in my workshop. It just has one of these inside. I think they can go up, uh, to, I think they work up into several hundred megahertz. So I'm not quite sure why this would use it though, because channels two through six are not that high a frequency. Um, certainly less than 200 megahertz. And a bunch of old, well, three old caps anyways. A couple dog bone resistors. Huh, that's an odd mix of technologies. I mean, these resistors are like the ones they used in the 20s on radios. Uh, these are a bit more modern. They're little wax type caps. Well, these are some odd, odd bugger here. I guess this is the power transformer. No obvious rec. Well, maybe this is the rectifier. That would be the filter capacitor. And then two oscillator tubes. Huh. I think I am going to have to get online and do my homework before I can even think about powering this up because uh, I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. I also noticed that the switch wasn't working right. Now I can see why when I turn the knob, the whole darn thing turns. Probably just have to tighten down the nut on that and I can be able to rotate the switch. Yeah, at any rate, hope I can get it working. Well, I've asked around a bit online and I've only got one response so far. Which kind of confirmed what I suspected that this is a very early piece of equipment by the Superior Instruments Company and there really isn't any documentation readily available. Uh, he also confirmed that uh, it's actually a very early primitive version of this guy. Uh, it will generate vertical and horizontal bars and the sweep we think uh, will do the equivalent of these guys, a horizontal and a vertical drive. So it's uh, um, it, it produces a variety of test signals out of this jack here that will help you troubleshoot a TV. As for the tubes, well, probably they were, this was built uh, not too long after World War II when they just used surplus tubes that were available, like these acorn tubes. And I guess their upper limit is about 200 megahertz, which would explain why this caps out of channel 6 and doesn't cover 7 through 13. And as far as this guy, oh, well, it is actually a radar tube, or a radar version of a 6J5 that's been converted to work as an AC rectifier. They soldered the grid and the plate together and uh, in fact all three of these, these tubes are actually soldered in place. Well, I want to get this tube out and check it and uh, repair the cracked base so I actually have to unsolder these caps before I can even get it out. And since I don't have any documentation and can't find any, what I'm going to do is read the existing stated values as best I can and do a quick recap on this and try to fire it up find out uh, what kind of signals it actually produces
I did a little reverse engineering and drew up a schematic of the power supply portion. It actually does make some sense now. They do indeed use this early radar tube for a rectifier. There's a wire shorts the plate and the grid together and then they pick the rectified AC off the cathode, goes to one side of this electrolytic then through these ancient dog bone power resistors and then the other side of the electrolytic. The other two tubes are type 954 acorn tubes which came out in the late 30s so once again all these components uh, if I didn't know any better I would say this was designed and built in the late 30s and not in the late 40s but uh, it's probably built using all wartime surplus uh, and uh, so I was able to read all the values off the capacitors as well and I dug some up out of my parts uh, supply and I also tested this tube and it tests good so pop in these caps and keep my fingers crossed and see if this actually does something well I've got some good news I went ahead and recapped it and uh, at first nothing happened when I powered it up uh, it turned out to be a heavily corroded power plug and also the power switch so I went ahead and sprayed all the controls with contact cleaner used some uh, sandpaper on the power cord and it's running what I've got hooked up to it is an RCA jack going to my scope and I've been playing around with the controls and there's one major downside I found out to this rotary control uh, first the whole switch was loose when I got it so I tightened the nut down but I wasn't sure what orientation to put it at uh, the problem is that the switch rotates infinitely so I'm not sure <laughs> Uh, since it was loose and, and rotating around when I got it, what exactly the right position is supposed to be. But, playing around with it, I'm looking at my scope, I think I've come close to figuring something out. Because what I've got here is a waveform and the frequency is reading about 15 kilohertz. That is the frequency for analog, for the horizontal portion of an analog set. So that's either got to be horizontal linearity or horizontal sweep. I rotate this control. Ah, it alters that frequency. So this this must be the horizontal sweep position, which means this pointer is way way off. If I go one position to the right and hit auto scale on my scope, and then at frequency, I've got 60 hertz, which has got to be the vertical. So since I went one position to the right, and from horizontal to vertical, so that's probably the horizontal sweep and the vertical sweep, which is if I go two back, it should be the vertical linearity. Ooh, look at that. Frequency on that guy. Interesting. This was what I suspect this should do. If it's vertical linearity, it should do vertical stripes. And the frequency is 800 hertz. So I suspect if I put this on a set, I'm going to see whatever 800 divided by 60 or possibly 30 is. I'll see that many stripes. Uh, oh, neat. And as I rotate this control, it changes the frequency. So I bet that changes the number of stripes I'll see on the TV. And the final position should be horizontal linearity which is a bit of a mess but I would expect this to be a much higher frequency huh, 200 kilohertz so if you divide 200 by 15 or so you should uh, should be a number of stripes going horizontal or well, the other way <laughs> so enough of me rambling let's hook up a TV and see what we see All right, I've got it hooked up to my Sentinel 430. I'm in the uh, vertical linearity mode, and indeed, it is making vertical stripes. Uh, or, I'm sorry, I mean horizontal stripes is what you use to make sure the vertical linearity is right. What linearity means is the spacing between each stripe should be the same. I've got this tuned to channel 3, or maybe it's 4, and likewise on this. If I rotate that control to another station, go higher, it'll fade out. If I rotate this, pick it up again. So, 
kind of cool, I think. Now, as far as the other mode, though, that leaves a little to be desired. This is supposed to have stripes going the other way, but it's a little, a little freaky. <laughs> the best I can do so far is to get uh, one, <laughs> one bar. If I go off of that, it starts to go diagonal. Uh, so it might just be this kind of TV. Or uh, I think there's something a little bit wrong with this, but of course I have absolutely no reference material to go off of. But at any rate, I uh, thought you guys might find this interesting to see a real vintage piece of test equipment used on a real vintage set. That's all for now.